Copyright disclaimer. Uh, it makes me unreasonably happy that this dropped on my grandma's birthday. Shout out to my grandma. Happy birthday, grandma. Can we get a happy birthday, Bill's grandma, in the chat? Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Bill. This is Trying to Stand, where I try new things in pop culture, except in living under a rock. Maybe a little less in this instance. Um, earlier in this year, I started listening to the music of Wilbur Soot, which then led me to uh, comments and people suggesting I check out a band that he's in, Lovejoy. Uh, they dropped an EP earlier this year, which doesn't feel like this year. Time is an illusion. Wilbur Soot, Joe Goldsmith, Ash Kabosu, I hope I'm saying that right, Mark Mark Boardman have a band together, Lovejoy. I've done a video previously. There's a playlist in the description, both for Wilbur Soot as well as Lovejoy. Check those out if you haven't. Plug, 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 like the video, blah, blah, blah. I also have a gaming channel, Build Chill Gaming, where I stream uh, Mondays and Thursdays to the best of my abilities. And speaking of the description, there is a link there to a card that will send you to resources for uh, mental health, social awareness, education, crisis lines, Trevor Project resources, things like that. Should you or someone you know, need them. I still don't watch any Minecrafty things. I don't know anything about like the the, I almost said the simps, the SMPs or anything like that. And I'm kind of trying to keep that fresh perspective, nothing against that kind of content or the work that goes into it. I just like having the perspective of just checking out the music without all this other context. So I'm really excited. Uh, we're just gonna be going through the EP as it's presented in order, track by track. I get one listen per song and then the lyrics page, just kind of give my thoughts. Um, but yeah, we're starting with, oh yeah, you gonna cry? I feel attacked. There we go, that's the video. Lovejoy attacked me in their new EP, not clickbait emotional, anyway. <laughs> oh yeah, you're gonna cry. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, there we go. Ooh, hello. Oh, it's so upbeat. I, I'm nervous. The same eyes as your father, and you carry the same kind of temper too. Oh shit. I thought you knew her better than me. Oh damn. It's so upbeat, but like damn. She told me that she fucking hates you. No, no. Damn, yeah, maybe a little therapy. Holy shit. Ooh, I'm actually, I really like the, the musicality's emotion out. Musicality, emotionality. I really like how it's feeling actually, cause it, it feels calm, confrontational. The, the <laughs> giggle at the end. Jesus, I, ooh. The lyrics already hit me as really spicy cause like you have the same eyes and temper as your father, right? And then talking about this failed relationship, she hates you, all this stuff. It makes me think of like this vicious cycle you kind of find yourself in while you're trying to grapple with your flaws, what you did wrong, but also still simultaneously focusing on obsessing over uh, the, the person or the relationship. I'm holding a pen so I can futz with something with my hands. Like you're focusing on, well, does she still think of me? Does she still talk about me? And it's like, instead of focusing on your other, th the thing you need to learn from or improve on or acknowledge about yourself and move forward with, right? And so I, I like the upbeat energy. Cause like I was saying, it kind of feels like somebody's trying to, with a positive air or a calmer demeanor or tone, try to kind of talk to you about it or like help you helpfully go through it. But then it also gives me this like toxic feeling of the song's upbeat because of the aforementioned temper of your father, right? But I love the way it sounded. I think it's important to talk about that kind of stuff, you know? I don't know, it, it, it felt halfway mindful, halfway spiral. So is the POV someone external? You have the eyes and temper of your father. So the POV is currently dating person with the temper's ex? Oh, that actually makes a lot of sense. Cause then yeah, the energy then not matching because the POV is not being confronted with this. That actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah, you need to calm down. What's good this energy devoted to me? If the person we're talking about has some kind of like temper, right? That they get from their father. And I like the energy of it where it's not, it's not hostile, it's not aggressive. It's like, check that kind of stuff out. You need like a, a, a more constructive version of you need help. And then even calling out the person being aggressive and stuff like, oh, I thought you knew we were better than me. So when you ask these kind of sad questions, right? Does she think of me? Does she say my name? I thought you knew her better than me. Shouldn't you know that if you really knew her? kind of calling that shit out. I really like that. Like it it has this feeling of like genuinely like get help, but also not like, oh, you poor thing. Let's invite you over to dinner and be buddies. Nah, there's still a boundary there, but I like that combination. Like it had this like removed layer of negativity, but not removing accountability. It kind of illustrates the POV too as someone who's like in a more collected headspace or like, hey, I've been there or just get get some help, look into this, stop it. It only feels like defensive when things get a little more aggressive. Calling out the the sense of like entitlement and I'll get her back and attacking the, the new 
the new partner and all that stuff. I really like that song. That's an interesting way to start this. The current boyfriend, the POV, isn't speaking for anybody else. She's made it clear as well. It definitely escalates the situation a little. That sense of like, not serenity, but like maturity, I guess. The POV not stooping to that level, not fighting back, just pointing out and yeah, yeah, yeah. you need to stop, you need to go. But it also gives me this like, you know, with me and find out kind of energy. And I don't know, I think it's helpful too to like kind of give you that that voice of reason. Hey, it sounds like you got a lot of stuff to work out. Maybe focus on that. I don't know, I like that. It's, it's encouraging for someone to sort out their own stuff and not focus on putting down others. But again, it also doesn't give this credence to, oh, you poor thing, it's, mm, you need to work on that, uh, temper there. I like that a lot. And next we have model buses, like fake buses, buses on a runway. This bus was featured last spring on the cover of Vogue. Okay, anyway, I'm stupid. Ooh, hello. God, I really love the energy of this. I wanna drive to this. Joke about bus here. We can barely see your ever seating. Yo, <laughs> some of us can't grow beautiful hair like you, Mr. Soot. <laughs> Ooh, regardless of warnings, the future doesn't scare me at all. To make sure the song does. Hello? Oh, hello? Mmm, I really like your voice, man. Sorry, I'm trying to focus <laughs> on the lyrics, but I love what you do with your voice here. Man, I don't know how else to say it about your vocals, but like, your relationship with vowels is always so pleasing. I don't know how else to word that. That was probably the dumbest thing I think I've ever said in a video other than, ooh. Jokes aside about my own inferior genetics. <laughs> as far as hairlines go. It made me think like somebody older, being scared of the future, being scared of progress, an older person, but also <laughs> shout out to my fellow young people who were uh, destined to lose in the hair race. Um, but it makes you think somebody older, so like maybe it's a commentary on like a boomer mentality or something like that. It feels political. He's got a bus, he's got a bike, get me out of here. Like, is it, you're scared of progression, but wait, public transportation, maybe talking about, you know, global warming, Warming, fuel crisis, things like that. And it's like, oh, here's like the one thing someone can cite as a progressive thing. And it's like, that's, that's nice. That's not enough. Or it doesn't cover everything the person that you're calling out is guilty of. I don't know. I know there's a lot of stuff that's going on. It's, it's hard for me to keep up with what's going on here. So I don't know. Shout out to the world. I think everybody's going through some shit. It feels like a one-sided argument. So I don't think the person you're going on about's like in front of you, right? Feels illustrative. Like you're reading an article, scoffing at or commentating on the news, which makes me think like, I don't know, a, a, a leadership figure, like a local uh, politician. I don't know, but it does. It makes you think like somebody, you know, shouting out the television or a video or an article. So yeah, maybe it is like, you're not doing enough. You take public transit, I, every little bit helps, but like if you're talking to someone in a place of uh, authority or leadership on that level, the vibe I'm getting, right? It's like, you definitely could be doing more. That's a kind thing for the common folk. Commonwealth, common folk. That's something normie people can do. Someone, in that like more uh, one percent -y kind of vibe. You could be doing a lot more. So maybe it's just about that. Definitely out of my wheelhouse, but like I said, it feels like somebody questioning, like I said, the news or a, a point of power. I loved the song. There's something about keeping it in that kind of lighter, energy pocket. I don't know, there's something about that that's like so inviting to a discussion. Cause it even starts with, I'm sure that your heart's in the right place. I'm sure you break more than I make. Like maybe in your eyes, you're doing something great. Maybe that's what it's about. Maybe in your eyes, you did something huge and it's like keep going or do more or it's not adequate enough. Whatever this thought or plan was, if that makes sense. My mom says you're up your own ass like a puppet show. I love that. I like that it feels um, like a less visceral, more thought out kind of response. And maybe that's kind of what the joke is there with the over revised to make sure the song does well or make sure the song does feeling like you need to be constructive with these thoughts or something like that, or be more not gentle, but like trying to not be so aggressive. I think obviously there's a lot of stuff here that's gonna go over my head. It even feels like somebody who's starting to pay attention more and trying to navigate things in a 
friendly way, but then even calling yourself out for like kind of holding back or pulling your punches or trying to give that benefit of the doubt. Your heart's in the right place. You break more than I make. Like that's a lot of responsibility. And I'm sure you think you'd made a giant move forward. And for you, I'm sure it was, but the reality is that you're not doing enough. You didn't even follow through on it maybe. Or maybe it's just like having the idea of a bus or a bike. That's nice actions please and more of them i'm obviously talking out of my ass here when it comes to the specifics but i like the song and like i said i like this feeling of an attempt to collect a thought but then also kind of calling yourself out for kind of sugarcoating it a little bit i don't know whatever's going on i hope hope somebody figures something out concrete i know what that is we have concrete in the u.s <laughs> so stupid all right next is concrete Ooh, there we go. Hello, drums. Ooh, I already love how this feels. Spend the rest of your life sleeping alone. Damn. All this over a kiss. Oh shit. Nah, maybe you should go, my dude. Damn, it rocks though. But yeah, this dude needs to get his shit together. Drink some water, go to bed. Ooh, I love that kind of musical like sway or kind of like slurred a little bit. Like it just felt kind of like one last little like mm, musically like like the drunk dude, right? Ironically, as I was just talking about how the understandable energy was felt musically, this time I felt the spike in the emotions and the heated discussion and you're drunk, it's 3 a.m., the bouncer's kind of warning you it's time to go. All this over a kiss, how did it end up like this? It was only a kiss, it was only a kiss. Obviously like a fight, but man, I hope the problems you, that make your life harder sit stubborn in your stomach like your kidney stones. Like, God damn, it's an aggressive fight. <laughs> like a couple like got into it at a bar, like they're drunk, it's all just pulled pouring out in public, but I love the way it sounded like, holy crap, like that, whoever's the drummer, like kudos to that opener. That was, that freaking rocked. But yeah, it's like a drunk fight in, and in public at that. And it kind of has this like reckless abandon of being drunk, not caring that you're in public. If I had it my way, I'd sleep on the concrete. Maybe it's like taking it one step further than like sleeping on the couch. Like let's just get it over with already. It's definitely not a healthy uh, argument possibly not a healthy relationship. It, it's been in public, obviously, this whole time, like in a in a pub. Now you gotta take the, the bus home and people have to like listen to your shit. Ooh, maybe, so we start in the bar, it's 3 a.m., you're on your third warning, so it's not even like at 3 a.m. the fight started. It's been going on and on and on. It continues on your way to the bus, at the bus stop, on the bus, and it, maybe it's about like, prolonging the inevitable inevitable it's like why don't you just break up now it's like it's still going and going and going they're both so unhappy maybe it's about like how stretched out a relationship could be despite how unhappy you are how hard it can be to end things if that makes sense because it's just it's multiple locations still going people are hearing you you're in public like there's not even like honey let's go like none of that energy it's like just done over with and it's like just end it already like break up, split up, and maybe it's about how hard that can be for people. If that makes any sense, it's definitely done. Sounds like it's been done for a while, if not throughout this exchange that we kind of entered in, in the middle of. There's still like a lot of, I'd say even like logistics to have to jump through. Like you know, I'd rather sleep on a concrete floor making me think like you live together maybe. That's kind of where my mind takes me. God damn. Musically it was great. I don't know. I couldn't tell you if as a child of divorce it's just making me a little extra uncomfortable or I'm just a little extra uh, cynical. And next is perfume. Oh shit. I like that. Like first I thought it was going to be like really calm. And then like, it just felt like a thought or like a re reaction just hit right there. I can still smell a oh shit. I thought we weren't afraid of new perfume. It's all for me to move on when I don't really hate. Oh shit. Love the honesty. Fuck, I love this sound. Ooh. Not not ooh the pain, but ooh the the sound your voice is making there. I love how in the chorus that like the line you can hear back there, it feels like the lingering perfume smell. You know, like it almost like wafts in the air of the music. Fuck, I love how this sounds. Taxi's not arrived. Don't think that he's coming. Damn, I 
loved that. I loved the the ups and downs emotionally. Like it felt like as soon as we were moving away from these thoughts, like something would trigger it again. And again, like I still smell the perfume. So you can almost feel like when it, you know, goes kind of back down to like just the, the guitar line for just one second and then like, bam, like it just, hits you, right? The smell or a memory or like your emotions and another thing, like that kind of feeling. Damn it, I loved that a lot. I loved the way it sounded. And I don't know, the honesty in it, like first it just felt like really aggressive and like judging the crap out of whoever your ex is with now. And the, the haircut, he's got a dumb name or their name. Yeah, I don't like his eyes. I don't trust their name. Yeah, or it could be multiple people, who's to say? But I don't hate you. And it's just as simple as like, this just didn't work out and it looks like it's working out with somebody else and that bothers me. And then as soon, like I said, as soon as we're stepping away from that feeling and that emotion and kind of same thing in the intro, it felt like we were gonna like kind of get like a softer lo-fi ballad -y kind of thing and then just Blam, it just hits you. Oh, I love that. That's so, <laughs> unfortunately, that's so real. It's 3.45 and I just bit my tongue. Update me on your life. Oh shit, are they like right next to you? Maybe they're catching up and it's like, you're trying to be angry, but like you keep smelling their perfume and like you miss them. You obviously still have feelings for them. I don't know. She learned to lie. She learned how to pretend. A drama in the futile, a means to an end. Oh, maybe this this ex of yours is lying? Either about the person being so great or even being real at all? Cause like the taxi's not showing up. It gives me this feeling of like either A, if this person's so great, why aren't they either with you now or why are you taking a cab, right? I don't think he's coming. Was he supposed to? Which then makes me wonder, is this person real or is this person really all that great? Are you lying to yourself because you don't like being single? Are you trying to save face in front of your ex, the ex being the POV? First, I was thinking you're, you're on a date with somebody else and they have like a similar perfume. Am I attaching my prior relationship on this person? And that could be the case. You're going in and out of the current conversation, your mind's still wandering to your ex. I can still smell your perfume. Like, are you just playing over the conversation you just had and that person's still, your ex is still waiting for a cab and it's like, I don't, I don't think they're being honest with me. I can still smell her perfume implies that she's not around anymore. That's really interesting. God, I love the the highs and lows emotionally and like feeling like the, the feelings are spiking and coming back and flooding back like that. I really like that. But damn, I'm I'm trying to place the story here and it's 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 kind of hard, but I kind of like that because I think it works both ways. Either you're having an awkward conversation with your ex you're holding back your feelings. You start to realize that she's lying. There's something that she's not telling you, but like, eh, what are you gonna do? Or like you're thinking back on the conversation and you still smell her perfume and it's like, oh wow, I'm still really not over you. Like you weren't ready for that interaction, right? So then you start to overthink things, literally like I'm doing now with the lyrics. Maybe it's even like you're overanalyzing a conversation that already happened and it's like, well, if you're still waiting for a cab, maybe this person isn't even real. That's fascinating, but I love how complex it feels. Again, it's hard for me to move on when I don't really hate you. Why can't you be a dick? Why must you be nice? She learned to lie. She learned how to pretend because her friends are all in relationships. It's like, I don't know how complicated this this story really is, this dynamic, this relationship between the characters, is the POV even trustworthy? Are you overthinking it? Which is really interesting and I kind of love feeling this uncertainty of it, how confusing it is, because I think the POV is confused and overwhelmed and trying to hate somebody they can't hate, get over somebody they still think about. It's upsetting, but like, I like how real it feels, you know? I really like the song, but damn, I'm still trying to map out the story in my brain and I, I couldn't set the stage for you in my mind. I don't know, maybe, hopefully we'll get a music video for this one and I'll just see it and go, oh cool, visuals, thanks guys. But I love the song, like holy crap, that might be my favorite one so far. It's all the breakups, guys. <laughs> and next is, you'll understand when you're older. This doesn't sound pleasant. It sounds pleasant, the emotion doesn't sound pleasant. There we go. Little woo. It's weird that it started so like negative feeling. Felt sad and upset, but then I like picked up. Uh. Ha, damn. <laughs> Me. Keeping a dark secret. Um, what? I don't like the scary story. What kind of pressure did they put on you? Oh, I hope this person's okay, Jesus. And you think that it gets better? Uh, uh, uh. Ooh, but that, ooh, I like the solo. Yo, I just want this person to be like, okay. Damn it, but that, that just rocks so much. F Thank you, I'm so like stressed, I need that. 
Ooh, now it's getting, it's crashing. <laughs> Indeed. I don't know, that felt like really and scary like holy shit like you'd understand when you're older and like the dark secrets and like oh like it'll be better soon having like a, a friend or a co-worker who like says one thing when they're awake right but then is like contradicting themselves in their sleep holy hell and now that like the beginning of the song makes so much sense where i'm like oh this feels sad it gave me like an unpleasant emotional headspace it sounded pleasant and then like it just picked up out of nowhere like almost like the person woke up and was like, oh, I'm fine, or no, I, I didn't say that. Like, lying, like that facade. That's interesting. Thank you for putting that kind of care and theme into your music. But yeah, like, avoiding talking about it, like, oh, you'll understand when you're older. That's when you'll understand the things that they do. Fall asleep on their shoulder in the break room. She'd been inside for too long, no shit. Like, that's not an excuse. Yeah, and then, like, kind of trying to spin this web of, oh, well, it's a stressful time for everybody. A lot's going on. But it's also, like, no shit. That's happening to everyone. Like, that's that's only valid so far. And, like, if you're being treated poorly or the person's uh, lying or even possibly, like, being, like, aggressive or possibly abusive. Links in the description, mental health and crisis lines, things like that. But it, it feels like a lot of red flags and it feels a lot of like, oh, well, you know, it's just the sign of the times the tempers are so high and everyone's so sensitive. And it's like, yes, but no, like it sounds like the POV is like a concerned person hearing this stuff. Also noticing the contradictions and what, what's being said consciously and indirectly or subconsciously, right? It's slipping out, whether it's literally someone talking in their sleep, taking a nap in the break room or something, right? Or even just like in trying to cover up whatever's going on, you're letting information slip. Yeah, it makes it just makes me think like red flags. And like I said, like the, the song itself where it's like something's wrong. Oh, never mind, nothing's wrong. Like that jump up, that startled, what? No, like kind of catching yourself, letting your mask slip, if that makes any sense. That song's really upsetting. I really like it. Like, God damn, I hate that fe <laughs> I hate trying to describe this feeling of like, that broke my heart and it bangs. Thank you. Like, I don't know. There's something about like encouraging the validity when something like doesn't feel right, but then also it, it's not like, oh, over respond, over correct. It's like, but still follow that gut instinct. Don't negate that feeling of like, mm, you okay? Like encouraging you to kind of like check in with somebody, right? And if they're not going to tell you the truth, they're not going to tell you the truth. Hope for the best. Hope that they have resources and a support system of some kind. Like without overstepping, right? Like paying attention and taking note of red flags or warning signs. I don't know. It's upsetting. I want, <laughs> I want these people to be okay. But I really like the song. I love what you guys do musically to like add to and invoke the emotion in the story. I really liked it, but holy crap, that sent me in a dark place and like I'm sweaty. And next is The Fall. Oh boy pumpkins and spices and ghost stories, right? Please, God. Those are things that I love and bring me joy. I love Joy the Fall. I LVJY that shit. This is gonna be sad, isn't it? Please don't be sad. And I, I feel what you're feeling. The Fall. Ooh, hello? We don't know how many lives it took, no. Oh, shit! And we're so calm, but we're fucking scared, fucking scared. God, yeah. Jesus. We got to country house now. Old dog has been put down now. Jesus, no! The puppy! Oh my god. Like, yeah, f get that out. Like, exude that feeling, but Jesus Christ. Oh, put it rocks. Holy shit, dude. I hope that helped to express that and thank you for doing that. Jesus Christ. Now I feel like an asshole, like we seasons and spooky times, like it makes you think like seasonal depression and I feel like an asshole now. Pulling away for a second to um, Wilbur Soot's uh, solo stuff, like having songs about like travel and like this kind of made me think of that a little bit. Like it almost felt frustration with the reality of like, even if you change your setting or something, like it still might not change everything, right? 
what you're going through, what you're feeling, what your emotions are at. And I don't know, it just felt, I hope anyway, therapeutic to like just get that out. Like we're so calm, but we're fucking scared. It's like, yeah, like you've been trying to keep it together, put on a brave face, especially, you know, as like a, as a creator and stuff, like trying to still engage in your life, your work and other people like everybody's doing, but like, you know, you got a lot of people looking at you. So I feel that maybe I'm projecting, but like that feeling of like trying to take in everything and respect the gravity of everything that's going on and acknowledge what's going on but also like put on a show and try to entertain people and try to help in some way or distract in some way either for yourself or for other people and it just got so aggressive as well as honest and I just I don't know I appreciate someone admitting that you're like scared you know thank you for talking about that I don't know it's comforting but even remove that lens of creating and entertainment and all that stuff thank you I'm just gonna go through the lyrics in order I'm just jumping around it just god damn uh, there must be more to this. Let's leave these sinker states and let's book a holiday. Like, yeah, let's go somewhere. And then realizing that like things are worse dealing with the same issues you're dealing with or something similar to it. But then like things are worse. Things are harder out here in the country or the people around you, right? The ramblers will say it's got a marvelous view. Yeah, maybe it's like you're at an Airbnb or you're out somewhere like camping or in a cabin or something. And it's like, you're looking around. It's like the people who live here are going through a lot of shit. And it's like, you didn't really, not only are you still stuck in your own headspace, but maybe it's even a feeling of guilt or realizing like you can't take a break from everything that's going on, right? It's still going on if you go somewhere else. I don't know. It's a marvelous view, but we don't know how many lives it took. Maybe it's even thinking about like, you know, the devastation of what we do even to the environment as well as to each other, or it could be about the current situation and everything too. Oh, maybe it's about, you've got a house in the country now. How many grocers does one county need? I couldn't tell you. I've never been out there across the pond. Either it's saying there's too many grocery stores. Why aren't they more spread out for everybody? Or there's not enough grocery stores. And I'm used to seeing like seven or eight of them in my immediate area, why do we need eight over here and zero over here? That's not like there's, there's an imbalance here in resources, right? Moving away to get away from it all, right? And then realizing it's its own set of struggles and obstacles here, kind of grappling with that grass is always greener kind of feeling. It just, it gives me that idea of like, to you, you moved away from it all and here you are out here and it's like, they don't even realize again, whether they have too many or too little stores and accessibility and things like that. I don't know. That's kind of the feeling that it's giving me. And like I said, just the emotional honesty of it, like something doesn't feel right. And then that like, there's such a jerking feeling to trying to come to terms with your internal struggles as well as what you're noticing externally as well. I don't know. I love that feeling of just getting it out there. We're calm, but we're fucking scared. The more places you go to live in, the more you start to realize there's more flaws than what you initially saw in the world or in your area or what have you. It sounded great. I really loved the music of everything. I love your choices. Like someone can appreciate the view. I would even argue maybe you envy that a little bit because then like they're not thinking about the devastation that's associated with the histories and the land and all this stuff. It just, it takes me so many different places and it's like, it's kind of looking at that ignorance is bliss kind of thing. It feels almost like running, not running away, but like changing settings, moving away from everything, like just made things harder or more challenging. Gave you a lot of time with yourself to realize how hard everything is, like I said, internally, and then seeing a lot more external stuff. I appreciate talking about it though. It just, goddamn class as well as accessibility, education, checking your privileges a little bit when you were out on holiday. I loved it and I really appreciate it, but like, God, that one hurt. We are going all over the place emotionally and I, I just, I appreciate it. It's interesting, like I, I started out in the middle of nowhere, moved to a city, seeing different places, areas, and then also being met with different environments, uh, thoughts, lifestyles, things like that. It's definitely jarring. And like I said, it, dealing with all those things while also trying to reconcile and address internal things all at once and yeah that overwhelming feeling and like it's still scary i don't know i just appreciate talking about it okay we're closing out the night with it's all futile it's all pointless damn it <laughs> oh shit wait that's a little familiar why does that name sound the title sound familiar oh maybe i've just maybe i've just said it a lot lately anyway it's all futile it's all pointless oh shit the passion that comes with living He's done this song before. I took geography course to learn the date lines. Maybe use a sextant. Yes, I know this song. Shit, yes. Check out my previous video to hear me talk about this song. F 
and pay my rent and reproduce and feed those kids and maybe use a sextant. Yeah, f yeah, dude. Oh, I needed the familiarity, but the song makes me sad. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, it sounds great. Ooh. Yes! F thank you. Well, that was exciting to get a familiar, I was a familiar face, a familiar sound, a familiar song. That sounded great. Good for you. Holy shit, are you kidding me? Did they just upload a music video for Model Buses? They did. Jesus Christ. 30 minutes ago. God damn. All right. I'll talk about it at some point. <laughs> anyway, focus. I loved that. Getting more from the instrumentals and everything. I still really like that song, but yeah, I was sitting there and I'm like, wait a minute. I love the way it sounded now. I love like bringing more, more of the instrumental work, like bringing the band in, I guess, but also I, I liked the new vocal choices of it. Kind of added to um, the chaos, wanting to use your degree, the trajectory that everything's starting to like change in your life, realizing that you're like kind of losing control of your life and wanting to learn from geography, use what you learned but then also like a sex sense used for like navigating right it's a funny sounding word because it has the s word in it <laughs> so many trajectory shifts in life that you almost feel like you've lost control or become someone completely uh different if you want my initial thoughts on the song listen to it play this in the description plug <laughs> i think i think fall upset me to the point where like something familiar at the end i was like yay oh boy if i had never heard this song before and added this boy into it i think i would have like flipped in a different direction emotionally this is exciting to hear a song get remastered like that that you like. I think it fits really well in this EP because like, again, like it kind of adds as we're coming off of this external internal uh, realization from the fall, not only the continuing journey ahead of you, the changes and trajectories of life, more things being added and your, your lens being widened in a sense, then also hitting on now you don't recognize yourself. So many things have changed. You feel even more lost. I, I think that complements each other really well. Great way to end the EP too. Like I said it was nice to hear a familiar face i didn't even give it a second thought looking at like i'm clicking on the track list and shit and i'm like making sure the songs are in order i didn't give it a second thought i just listen to shit on shuffle in my own time so like damn but that was nice thank you for bringing that back and like like i said i like hearing it with the band i like the new direction you took it in uh vocally it's kind of heartbreaking to feel like there's like been a step back after a song like the fall you'd hope then you'd have more of a revelation but i think this is like the emotional cliffhanger moment where you've realized more things now in to the EP. I really love this EP. I'm pissed that we're getting new music videos dropping as I'm freaking recording this. If you want a video where I talk about the visuals, I could super do that too. I think it might be smart to wait to see how many more music videos drop. But I really love this EP. And like I said, not to gatekeep, but I think there's something kind of like ending with a remaster of a, a song that someone might have heard prior, but I think it also fits really well with the EP for someone who hasn't heard it before. Let me know what you think if you haven't heard that song before until now. I love that our emotions kind of bounced all over the place because I think that's kind of of very honest to what's been going on lately. The one constant throughout the EP was change. I, I loved feeling questionable and skewed points of view as well as uh, a new point of view entering somebody's uh, headspace. I love the stories. I love your freaking, all of your abilities. I love the... I love the music. I love the instrumental work. The guitar work is so breathtaking. I love the drumline intro earlier. I love the sound and I loved how it always added to the emotion. It made things clearer in a lot of ways, honestly. And I really appreciate and admire that. You can feel how much is getting added here. The, the peaks and lows, the mask slipping off and you'll understand when you're older. The audio representation of the smell coming back in perfume. I loved this EP. I had a great time just talking about the music and breaking it down. I can't wait for more, but yeah, I'd love to know your guys' thoughts. What do you guys think? Um, what do you think of my thoughts? Is there something I missed? Let me know in the comment section down below. Uh, don't forget to like the video if you did. Subscribe if you want more. Ring the bell. Check the settings. Blah, blah, blah. Algorithms and YouTube words. I also have a gaming channel, Build Chill Gaming, where I stream Mondays and Thursdays. That's linked in the description. Speaking of the description, there's also a card linked in the description that takes you to resources for social awareness and education, as well as mental health crisis lines, Trevor Project resources, things like that. Should you or someone you know need them? Uh, thank you for watching, guys. And thank you, you know, I never would have checked out Wilbur Soot, let alone Lovejoy, uh, without your guys' uh, suggestions and people enjoying the videos and stuff that I've made. You know, I, I appreciate that. Like, this has been really fun, and it's because of you guys and your support, as well as your kindness. So thank you again, guys, and I'll see you next time with more Trying to Stand Goodness. Thanks so much again for watching, guys. I appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, be safe, be mindful of others, wear a mask if you choose to go out. Remember to take care of yourselves, please.